new PC? Or do I upgrade the one I have? New PC? Upgrade the one I have. Hey guys, it's Bob from Gill Skills. Hope everybody's doing well. If I look up every now and then, I've got a whole bunch of stuff written down on the computer to kind of help me go through all this for you uh, so I don't miss anything. So as many of you may or may not know, I'm a very budget conscious person. I, along with Mrs. Gill, weigh out what we can spend our money on. And we try to stay within our cash flow means. With that being said, I've reached a crossroads with my PC that I use every single day. I purchased this HP Pavilion P6774Y back in 2011, and it served me well. However, with a growing YouTube channel and other projects that I'm working on, I require something a little bit more powerful. Basically, if your PC isn't doing what you need it to anymore, and that PC helps you to earn a living or helps you with education, there are choices to be made. <laughs> so I begin to think about the options. Uh, do I buy a new PC? Do I build a PC? Or do I upgrade the one I have? The answer to those questions will vary from one person to another. It really boils down to your budget and your preference. Unfortunately, my budget overrides my preference in this case because I have little to no funds to play with. I simply do not have the money to purchase a new PC or to build one to my specific specifications. So upgrading my PC it is. The first thing that needs to get done is to pull up all the specs on any PC that you're working on. You can do this by simply going to the manufacturer's website and putting in the model information or you can Google uh, the make and model information and uh, pull up similar results. But I would recommend the manufacturer over simply just Googling it. Let's go over my PC specs. The first thing we want to look at is the motherboard. Here's my motherboard specs. It's important to know the kind of board it is. And in my case, it's an AMD board, which means it's compatible with AMD architecture. The board can take up to four RAM cards, and the most important piece of information on this page is that it has one PCI Express 16 slot for a graphics card. This is super important because a graphics card is the centerpiece of my upgrade. I have the second best processor that's compatible with my motherboard, and I felt the processor I have should be adequate for now. RAM memory is the second most important thing to consider in any upgrade. My PC originally came with 6 gigabytes of RAM, and as you can see here, it'll take up to 16 gigabytes of RAM on a 64-bit platform, which I have. It's very important to make sure that you get the right RAM cards for your motherboard. If you don't, the RAM may not work properly, if at all. As seen here, I will need four 4 gigabyte DDR3 DIMMs with 240 pins, PC3, 10600 DDR3-1333. You don't have to fill all four memory spots. You can have an 8 gigabyte and two 4 gigabyte cards or two 8 gigabyte cards or an 8 gigabyte, a 4 gigabyte and two gigabyte cards. As long as you're following the specs that your motherboard requires, it can be any combination size cards that add up to the max your board will handle. And lastly, the power supply. This PC only has a 250 watt power supply. The components that I'm buying may not draw too much more power, however I purchased a 750 watt power supply just to be safe. Overkill? Maybe, but for $35 it's worth it to me to have that assurance. Here we have a Kentec 750 watt power supply along with a XFS Radeon R7240 4GB DDR3 graphics card, G-Skill 2 4GB RIP-JAW DDR3 cards, 
and two terabytes of hard drive space that I'll be adding as well. Total cost spent $210. Here's a specs comparison between the integrated graphics processor in my computer now and the graphics processor that's going in. The old GPU specs is on the right and the new GPU specs is on the left. As you can see there is a substantial difference between the two. The integrated processor only has about 500 megabytes of RAM space, whereas the new card has 4 gigabytes. Should help out with video encoding and processing. Time to get to work. We'll start by taking the side panel off. So the first thing we're going to want to do is take the power supply, as in the old power supply, out. For that, we'll need a screwdriver to take out these four screws. Once the fourth screw is out, we can simply slightly push inward on the power supply to get it loose and then gently take it out. Next we're detaching the power supply connections from the motherboard and also the disk drives and the hard drives. Now that we've got some room in the case, we'll go ahead and take out the RAM chips. I already have two G-Skill 4GB RAM cards. We're going to put the other two that I just got in now. Now it's time to put the second hard drive in its place. Next, I'm trying to fit my fat fingers in to connect the SATA data link cable to the motherboard that will connect to the second hard drive. And of course, connect the other end to the hard drive itself. Ah, that new graphics processor smell. Now it's time to connect the graphics processor to the graphics board itself through the PCI-16 graphics slot that we had talked about earlier.
And now the installation of the Almighty Power Supply. Now let's connect the new power supply to the motherboard, the disk drive, and the hard drives. And finally, some cable management. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. I hope not. Plug the end. Let's see how the monitors work. Oh, 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 so far so good. We'll see if it turns all the way on. It should. I can't imagine it wouldn't. Once the PC is turned on, the first thing I do is update the drivers for the new graphics card. And as you can see, it was updated successfully. And as you can also see, all of the RAM cards are showing on the board, showing a total of 16. And there's the additional hard drive, showing an extra 2 terabytes, or 1.81. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Support Gale Skills on Patreon.